One of the hottest topics in medicine right now is how a squeaky clean lifestyle can mess with your health. Gut bacteria plays a crucial role in fighting diseases from cancer to obesity. Dr. Robin Chutkin is the author of The Microbiome Solution, a radical new way to heal your body from the inside out. She's a gastroenterologist at Georgetown University Hospital. Good morning, doctor. Good, Good to morning. see you. Thank you for having me. This is so interesting. Let's start first with what is the microbiome? The microbiome refers to all the bacteria that live in or on our bodies, about 100 trillion bacteria in all, most of them in our digestive tracts. We've been taught that bacteria is bad, but in fact, there is good bacteria, right? Absolutely. In fact, the vast majority of the microbes that live in our bodies are actually a vital part of our ecosystem, and they're essential to our health. They're not disease-causing germs, as we've been taught. You say we're damaging our microbiome with too many drugs and not enough bugs. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? So Hippocrates said it thousands of years before I did, all disease begins in the gut and the drugs that we use antibiotics at the top of the list other drugs like steroids hormones acid blockers mm -hmm. all damage this very sort of fragile ecosystem yeah. and can lead to damage to the intestinal lining which then leads to damage to other organ systems. In fact these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and birth control pills I think that would surprise people those also do damage? Absolutely absolutely and of course they're very commonly used I mean people take NSAIDs all the time and a An large NSAID percentage non-steroidal anti-inflammatory like drug. Advil or Advil, Anacin, Aleve, things yeah. containing ibuprofen and of course birth control pills widely used what, what are some of the diseases that you think are, are linked to this misalignment? So the general term for imbalance in the microbiome is dysbiosis. And what we're finding is a lot of diseases that we thought were genetic, cancer, autoimmune diseases, mm -hmm. are actually linked to dysbiosis. That's the root cause is this disorder in the gut microbiome. Obesity is another one. There's been a lot of really interesting research showing that obese people have different microbes and that if you are obese and you have overrepresentation of some of these bad bacteria, those bacteria are actually able to extract more calories from the same food. Wow. You're referring to studies where they've taken thin mice and they put some of their gut bacteria exactly. into obese mice. Yes. And that is actually and vice versa. And vice versa. Yeah. Quickly, what are some of the symptoms of microbiome damage? So some of the symptoms of dysbiosis are clearly related to the gut, and that would be things like gas and bloating and irregular bowel movements, but a lot of it is far-reaching autoimmune diseases like mm. multiple sclerosis, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, certain forms of heart disease, some types of cancer, and the symptoms can include vague sort of nonspecific things like brain fog, fatigue, joint pain, rashes, food intolerances. So what should, be, what should we right. be eating? So we need to eat food that feeds our gut bacteria, what we right. call prebiotic foods, and that's primarily poorly digestible plant fiber. So things like asparagus, artichokes, leeks, onion, garlic. Mm -hmm. I see you're sort of shaking your head a little bit. No, no, are, no, I'm, I'm making a list mentally. Perfect, <laughs> wonderful. So these are all foods that feed our gut bacteria, lentils, oats, and uh, can really help you to grow a good gut garden, as I like to say. What about probiotics? Often when you go on antibiotics, the doctor will say, take this shortly thereafter yes. and fix whatever you've done to yourself. So the most important thing to realize is that taking a probiotic does not fix the damage done by an antibiotic. A broad spectrum antibiotic, five days of a typical broad spectrum antibiotic can remove up to a third of your gut bacteria. Wow. And there's no guarantee that these species come back. So taking a probiotic after that is like draining out the entire bath of water and then putting in a cup of water and thinking, okay, I'm fixed. I mean, it can help, but you also have to make sure you're taking a robust probiotic with enough live bacteria and that you're taking the right strains. So it's not a matter of simply trolling the drugstore and yeah. picking up a probiotic. I'm so fascinated by this topic, and I know we know people in general who've had really serious illness, and by fixing kind of their gut, they have fixed a lot of problems. Um, what about just, I mean, obviously we should use less antibiotics, but what about the soap we use? You know, now everywhere you go, we have yeah. the hand sanitizer. I like to use that hand sanitizer. You think we should pull back on that? I absolutely think we should pull back. We are super sanitizing ourselves into illness and thinking that we are being clean and preventing disease, we're actually causing disease by disrupting the microbiome. So right. if you are visiting somebody sick in the hospital, that's a good time to use a hand sanitizer. Right. If your kid's been playing out in the yard, have them rinse their hands with water. This 
concept of rewilding is very important. We're seeing the exact same species die off in our GI tract that we're seeing externally. We've killed off about half the wild animals on the planet, and we're doing the same thing in our guts. So right. to be healthy, we really have to protect our microbes, okay. and the super sanitization, not so much. All right, Dr. Robin Chutkin, thank you so much. Fascinating stuff. The microbiome solution is on sale now.